Text äh, zuerst sprechen. Das ist prinzipiell geplant. Ja, aber vielleicht startet dann mal die Moderation. Ja, mit. Äh, ja, also Sie bekommen dann ein Ding von Ihrem Vortrag äh, über Shahin. Sie müssen dann nur sagen, äh, ob es weitergeht, weiter und so. Dann wird er äh, seinen Bildschirm freilegen. Aber kann ich das, äh, das Bild sehen? Okay. Shahin, äh, könntest du das Bild zeigen? An Professor Chef, geht das? Dass du deinen Bildschirm zeigst? Ja, 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 geht das, ja, geht das. Kannst du das zeigen? Ja, super, okay. zeig das ja. Work is noted for a strong emphasis of context 
the sophisticated and often ironic use of architectural elements, and an interest in rules and underlying order rather than sculptural forms. Uh, before inviting our top guests, I would like to note that our dear author, uh, audiences and participants can write their questions on the chat uh, bar on the right-hand side, and uh, they can be discussed later. Uh, well, I would like to invite Dr. Chesh to deliver her speech. I will punctually try to rise doubt about the concept of identity. I would even say identity is not existing. At least it is not the subject of an intention in architecture. There is no rational method to produce identity. Among my examples, there is a palace in Isfahan, which you probably know better than I do. I have seen it. I was in Isfahan once, many years ago, but it reminded me, uh, can you show the next picture please? Next please, to a town hall by Rafael Moneo, in a city in of Logrono in Spain, uh, which has also very thin support. Next, please. Like this. It is rectangular, but not in the way one would think first. Next, please. Next, please, and a palace even more beautiful, which uh, impressed me even more than that one, is the also in Isfahan, this palace at the side of the great play of the great square. Next, please, and the next. It's in a row of very regular, of a, a row of very regular, of a very regular buildings, even uh, resembling the, the great bridge in Isfahan. Next, please. This is the section, and if you look at the top floors, there is an acoustic chamber. There is a music hall. Next, please. Entschuldigung, Herr Sie können Sie ein bisschen lauter sprechen? And this Iranian example has had a certain influence on a project in Switzerland by Marcel Miley and Marcus Peter, who designed, is going to be executed probably in the next years. The design is already several years old, of a, also a music chamber in Switzerland. Next, please. Is it loud enough? Oh, it's yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Sorry, this is still this is still the interior of the of the Isfahan Palace. Next, please, as well. Oh, sorry, the next, yeah, this as well. Next, please, this is this is yeah, that one. This is the design for the music hall in Switzerland.
which is uh, which uh, uh, definitely recalls uh, um, uh, 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 reminiscent of of uh, a room like this with reflection, reverberation, volumes. Next, please shows the plan. Marcel Miley has died in meanwhile, and uh, but, but uh, there is another group of architects who will execute this building. This is uh, just uh, some some uh, hints, some ideas of the question of identity. Is this identical or is it influencing identity? Uh, as I said, I don't I consider no valid method of creating of securing identity. Identity is something which is uh, which is which can be included by the result by the final, by the perception by others. Next two, please. The next one and the next one. This is the, uh, sorry, not, not the, 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 back to the, I, uh, this is a great uh, plaza, a great square in Brussels, which I also, uh, I'm, a, 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 I'm in my designs. I try to be very methodical, and on the other hand, if you buy, if you see something which is which you consider very beautiful, which which is moving you, then you try to find out why this is why this is happening, why this is something you you can call beautiful. Uh, and here we have ornaments, which uh, is something that modern architecture said is not possible to use. The excess of uh, Iranian architecture and Islamic architecture is not uh, is not missing. Uh, ornament. Next one, please. There is a basic technique, a basic approach to to modify, to model the outer surface, which even goes, as in, in this example, partly into written texts. Part of these ornaments can be written texts, and they, uh, in some way, derive. From antique, from an antique uh, natural image, next piece of the acanthus uh, leaf. The top image is antique; it's not Iranian or Islamic. And below, there is another version of the same uh, turning. A cantus ornament which is more abstract and uh, simplified in a way, but uh, co say rather say concentrated. Next, please. Again, an example of Islamic architecture. Next, please and. Next, yeah. Uh, this is a house I designed in the late 1970s in a neighborhood of, of houses near Vienna out of the 1940s. Many of them remodeled, as you will see afterwards. My design, in its outer appearance, adopts the trivial vocabulary of the surrounding buildings. But in the interior, uh, this 
house is has a special uh, spatial characteristic which is derived from Adolf Loos. Adolf Loos introduced, he, con he even considered this as his invention, uh, to create within the volume of a house different volumes uh, parting this house, but volumes that were not uh, limited to certain horizontal planes, to, to, to plans which, uh, which have the same height, but uh, the economy of the plan, when you try to design, you have to arrange uh, different rooms and you try to get rid of unnecessary rooms between these rooms and you try to have a certain economy in terms of space but also of usage uh, and Lowe's has transported this, this uh, considering from the horizontal from the plan to the vertical to the section and, uh, he said that not all rooms have to be have to have the same height. Uh, next, please. So we see this uh, approach of a room a round plan is most considered it. Next, please. In this. Uh, section. It's a house in a county where a one family house must not have more floors than two. These two floors you see to the left. Below there is a large uh, basement uh, including a swimming pool, but the, uh, the top two uh, plants, the top two floors are the main floors reducing this to uh, one family house if it had more floors it would not uh, have it would not be valid as a uh, one family house and would have to have wide, wider stairs and whatever uh, but in this house you see on the right side even five floors including the, the including the rooftop uh, with rooms that are smaller, that are the entrance or bathrooms or uh, storages and so on. Uh, so, and this is an, an advantage you gain if you do, are not if you are not forced to to keep to uh, to uh, regular plain floors altogether. Next, please. A pupil by Lowe's, uh, a pupil of not, not, let, let please, the, the one before. Uh, a scholar of Lowe's has called this with a, uh, with a German word Raumplan. The best translation in English is uh, plan of volumes. Next, please. Impression of the interior. Next, please. A model that can be a, a model that can be uh, uh, separated and, and uh, take, uh, taken apart. And if if you have if you use a, a vertical context like this, uh, any change. For example, in in a, in, a, uh, in the course of a stair, next please, will influence the whole rest of the of the design. It is as as in a musical boom. But on the outside, next please, and the next, in the outside, this has a certain uh, imagery. In, in its outer appearance, 
the, as I said, the, the design adopts the trivial vocabulary of the buildings around. In another context, this exterior appearance would not make sense. It even includes elements of remodeling. Actually, it looks like an alteration, as if father had added the part with a flat roof, with a terrace, to grandfather's house, which had a gable. I said that this exterior relates to the tri trivial vocabulary. Next, please. In this settlement, many houses have been re uh, transformed or rebuilt in later years. This is a collection of alterations like this. Uh, the alteration here, uh, in my design, consists, next please, consists in a addition of a flat roof or a terrace and a gable roof. Next, please. To uh, illustrate this further, I relate to a design uh, I did with a group of architects in the, in, the lay, in the year 1975, even earlier. Next, please. It was a terrace housing of houses that could be industrially produced, but at the same time, a self-built activity should be possible so that the facades could be done by the people themselves. Next, please. Since we had to draw facades for the competition entry, we tried to show what these facades, facades could be like. Still, they are architects' facades. And they include the, the participation of the, uh, of, the uh, of the users. The idea is that the users can also contribute to their building. Uh, next, please. But not only uh, in, in technical uh, or in spatial, in, in usage, usage context, but if the users participate, then you also, as an architect, you also have to accept this uh, aesthetically. Next, please. So these facades are explained by this uh, aspect that the architect doesn't even know what the facade, what the, uh, the, the user will create as a facade. Next, please. Just sorry. Uh, next, please. And next, please. As another example, I show a little a cafe, which even is called Little Cafe in Vienna, where, next, please, the, the mirrored walls uh, seem to be limited, or seem to be enclosed by a wall which is perforated, and the wall that is perforated is supported by pillars and is hanging, is 
in a way is tensile, uh, is a tensile structure. Even the complete system of columns and cables is created by reflection. There is a, decorate, a decorative wood wooding uh, in some uh, arrangement that creates the impression of ropes of cables. Next, please. Next, please. This is derived from the technical, uh, technological uh, aspects, uh, the technological uh, uh, advantages that are created by Frei Otto, a, a German constructor and architect who for example was a part of the of the creation of the uh, Munich Olympic uh, uh, buildings in 1972 and he produced a whole world of thinking in tensile structures even when these tensile uh, the forces are introduced into conventional buildings. So, next please. So, this is not structural in this cafe. Next please. But this decoration, this spatial uh, introduction would not be possible 30 years ago uh, earlier, 30 years earlier when these inventions and, and uh, creations of Frei Otto had not existed yet. Next please. Next please. And next please. This is a building in Tehran by the architect Karman Diba. It's not a, it's an, a, a Western. Uh, it's a Western uh, approach of creating architecture of the fifties, uh, uh, presumably, presumably. And at the same time, next, please. Yeah, this is a image from outside. Next, please. And this is also taken by my by a by a uh, stay I had I had for a lecture in Tehran. This is including and showing an exhibition of the Austrian architect of the turn of the century, of the turn of the last century, around 1900, uh, named Otto Wagner. Now you, we have three things. We have the uh, Iranian Tehran context of architecture. We have the Western influence into architecture, which you see in the building, and you have the uh, mid, uh, the, the earlier in the century uh, uh, produced architecture of Otto Wagner, also of, of mid Europe in a kind of uh, uh, addition all, all together. But in the, uh, Wagner, Wagner is considered the, one of the beginnings of modern architecture in Europe. If you uh, look at the, at the picture, at the uh, design, at the perspective that is seen and, uh, immediately to the right of the, of the man who is standing there. Next, please. Sorry. Excuse me, uh, uh, I go, let's go back to the to the image before. Yeah, uh, I forgot to mention on the left side, you see two 
images uh, of two photographs uh, large, very much enlarged in the in the corner. One is a one is a, a living a sleep a bedroom by Otto Wagner in his own apartment, and cut off almost next to it to the right is uh, his bathroom. And now the next, please. This is the, the this bathroom on this picture in the building uh, we, we have seen before, shown, and this bathroom includes a glass bath tube, very kind of revolutionary, also as lifestyle in in the in the Vienna of uh, around 1900, and maybe also very. Uh, impressive uh, today, and also also impressive in, in, in uh, and still even funny in Tehran. We show next please, which is the same uh, picture we saw before. Now I would uh, 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 go over to the to this picture I mentioned before. Next please, it's. It's not a church, it's a, the central building of an academy in art, a design, it's not executed that way. But if you could even say that it has certain oriental uh, fant and fantasy uh, aspects in European context. Next, please. Uh, the, sa the same Otto Wagner uh, has created things like uh, like that. This is a, the part of a traffic system in Vienna, where of which the identity is very complex. It ha it includes as well the orn ornamental elements of designs as the one before. But also the technical aspects and the structural aspects uh, that are uh, uh, connected with the idea of a traffic system and of a, a bridge, of an urban bridge uh, across a river and across uh, free uh, uh, across also a traffic another traffic system because the same uh, metropolitan railroad that that is leading uh, across this bridge is also uh, hidden, uh, uh, leading under the bridge in the, in another direction. Next, please. Now this is again a model of which has been executed much later, and it's only a, a few uh, few decades. That this this model of Otto Wagner's design was done, and I said, May, "Isn't that also uh, doesn't that include uh, an Oriental aspect and uh, Oriental uh, imagery of uh, architecture?" Next, please. I have just taken any uh, mosque to compare this aspect. And also would like to compare uh, next, please, a Baroque church of Vienna, which is consciously referring to Islamic architecture, but also Roman aspects. It's the the uh, the uh, re uh, remake, in a way, of a situation that is existing in Rome. Which uh, presents one uh, column and two domes uh, on the Piazza del Popolo in Rome. Uh, so this is early 18th century again a comparison of different worlds. And uh, next, please, and leave the, the black one, please. Leave, leave, no, please leave the.
I, why don't you show the whole? I, I'm not finished yet. Can you show the black? Can you leave the black picture before? Or leave that one. Okay, leave that one. If it's going any any uh, surprise or okay. uh, I would also consider that architecture and identity in architecture is not only uh, something that cannot be an intended effect, but only something perceived and uh, uh, yeah perceived afterwards when you when the result is existing uh, it, uh, this also rela uh, uh, relates to the aspect that architecture there is a, a German word now we, you, we can take the next picture um, yes uh, there is the German word Sachlichkeit, which means objectivity and realism. Uh, now, uh, architecture has very uh, many uh, aspects, very many, has to do with very many objects. So, um, generally, people think that objectivity and realis realism results in homogeneity and in uniformity. But since architecture is working and uh, relying on very many objects, on uh, they have uh, architecture has to take into account a lot of different layers uh, of structural, of uh, uh, usable, of technical uh, layers, and these layers and these objects are not are not uh, equal, they are not the same. Uh, so if you really take objectivity serious, it, result, it does not result in homogeneity, but uh, next please, in heterogeneity. Uh, even a light, uh, which even a light switch at one time was an um, uh, alien element in, in a room. And only afterwards, these things that are heter heterogeneous uh, at the beginning get uh, or may get uh, a certain unity and an identity. Thank you. Thank you for your great speech. And now uh, I would like to um, to have a brief introduction about Professor Nasid Nabian, who is an Iranian architect, studied her master in architectural engineering and Shaykh based the University in Tehran and her postgraduate studies at the University of Toronto. She was partner at former Ash Studio and co-founded Shift Process Practice with Ramut Ilkhani. She is the author of many seminal articles and book chapters in the field of architectural and urban technologies and is a, a frequent a contributor to, in Iranian periodicals. And, well, I would like to invite uh, Professor Nabian. First of all, I want to thank you to invite me to your event. Salam be dushman Iranian Aziz. 
when I was asked to talk about identity, um, because our office is currently involved in the uh, last stages of completion. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. As it relates to uh, what we have conceived uh, for Iranian Pavilion in Expo 2020 in Dubai, um, the title of my talk is Shahzad, a search for identity in Global South. So Shahzad is the name of the Iranian Pavilion and why Global South? So there is, the, there is a very sane map that can be googled on internet um, which divides the globe along, along the line to global south and global north. Global north representing the developed countries, the ones that have altered modernity, and global south, including Iran, representing the developing countries who are not the authors of modernity. For countries like Iran, uh, this line represents the duality between us and them. And for us, there is always a crisis of identity facing modernity. A con Hello? A concept that we haven't altered. So, okay. In, um, in being exposed to the core concepts of modernity, you are either the author of modernity or are in the process of absorbing modernity in a fast paced uh, process of modernization. And then there is this third approach of having an alternative modernity, trying to author your. Uh, custom tailored modernity and this is the question of how you can be within the contemporary mainstream for the glo countries of global south the only way of being a part of contemporaneity is to try to have their alternative or modernity and how is it possible perhaps through remembering the self and reappropriating the other while you have roots in the past and being of here, meaning us, being still us, and also of now, which is basically what they own, representing them. And uh, with this idea of identity in mind, um, let's go through the ca curious case of Shahzad. Iran's pavilion in Dubai's Expo 2020. And the try of the architect to somehow reconstruct what they understand about uh, contemporary Iranian identity. So, when we were invited to, uh, to the competition for conceptual design of the Iranian pavilion, uh, naturally we went through the history of the Expo, starting from 19th century, mid 19th century. If during the 19th century and up to mid 20th century, the, uh, the world expo, uh, uh, Expos were about technology, uh, we gathered that now that we are talking and we were trying to design for Iranian pavilion, the expo is about cultural specific specificity and global connectivity at the same time. There are two um, stories, two historic stories that before moving to the concept, concept um, of the pavilion, I want to share with you. The first one, is the siege of Baghdad. 
the Baghdad, which was the capital of the Abbasid dynasty, was under siege in, 12, uh, in uh, 1258, um, and at the same time, Yagut Mustasami Hello? Okay. I don't know why my audio is like uh, disconnecting all the time. So, Yagut Mustasami was the Persian official colleague of during the siege. We are talking 17th century, right? And this is the Persian miniature of Yagut. Uh, trying to do cal Persian calligraphy. The, on, the, uh, on this miniature, it's him trying to write the letter K, which in Persian it, uh, we call it Kham. So the story goes as this. Baghdad is under siege, and the cities are full of blood. And one of the uh, students of uh, Yagut Mustasemi comes to him. Why are you sitting in calm, Yagut, he says. And he responds in absolute calmness. Silence, my child. I am writing a cane that is going to change the world, let alone Baghdad. And this is the letter K in Persian, huh? And uh, around one uh, century after the siege of Baghdad, you see that the style of calligraphy uh, that Yagut has invented uh, being included in the architect Islamic architecture of the time under which is the power structure that took reign of uh, the, um, Iran, uh, Iran ge ge geopolitics after the siege of Baghdad. This means the Yagut's cough story is an example of Persians reappropriation and owning of other cultures, even the court conquerors. The second story that I would like to share with you is the Shahzad 1001 Nights Tale which is a case of postponing violence through a storytelling. The king is out of his mind. He is, uh, he is intending to chastise an individual who believes that uh, is, a, is a sinner. And Shahzad tells the stories for 1001 nights, each night uh, focusing on a part of the story to postpone this violent act. These two examples are representative of uh, how Iranians have always been using soft power, meaning diplomacy and culture, versus hard power, meaning war and battlefield. And the combination of these two stories inspired uh, the design of Iran's uh, pavilion for Expo, Expo 2020. Then we have started designing for the pavilion. It was in 2008. And Trump has just signed U.S. Le uh, to leave uh, uh, to leave the joint comp uh, comprehensive plan of action, JCPOA which resulted in serious sanctions against Iran. As architects at the time, we were trying, even if we wanted, to try, uh, we, want, we wanted to submit our design to different award competitions, um, in choosing our country, there wasn't the name of the, our, our country in the drop-down list. It was as if the global community was, has agreed on eliminating the name of Iran from the global map. And that was quite interesting, to, to say the least. And we decided that the pavilion should basically be a narration, uh, a storytelling about the fact, the simple and straightforward fact, that we are there and we, are, we have our own of being in the world, absolutely no way uh, to eliminate a nation from the map, right? 
And this was not the first time that uh, Iranians as a nation were uh, facing hard times, huh? There is always this sort of uh, dual survival policy that we can see in our historicity. The first one is a poetic understanding of an uncertain future. The future is always uncertain for, for this geopolitics. From the ancient uh, times to the modern And the second one is owning cultures to soft power. And this idea of poetic storytelling is represented in our tradition of illustration and painting, miniature. In miniature, uh, the paradigm of uh, perspective, the tradition of perspective is not present, right? So it is a flat way of storytelling, but, uh, uh, and uh, all the micro par the parts of resonance at the same time uh, within your or uh, within the view um, field view of the without the utilization of the story. So the micro uh, story, the micro tales create the macro tale, create the overall tale, and they are. Uh, they are simultaneously present within the frame uh, in a parallel fashion. This idea of uh, multiplicity of chaos uh, being simultaneously present informs the plan and the spatial organization of the Iranian pavilion. The pavilion is not an autonomous standalone building, but a spatial field condition. Consisting of, consisting of multiplicity of um, cubic spatial uh, packets. Transforming the autonomous object to a fit condition would uh, basically change the status of the boundaries. In this situation, the boundaries would be vague soft and negotiable. And this negotiability of boundaries is not just limited to the exterior boundary, it's not just limited to the extremities of the build uh, of the complex. The complex is a neighborhood of uh, architectural um, pieces which each of them have a negotiable threshold in their own rights. How did we arrive at this architectural negotiable threshold? By utilizing uh, the, the archi uh, a peculiar architectural element, which is that of a bead curtain. A bead curtain can, be negoti can negotiate with the body of the occupant of the space. You can open it up on demand. So basically the pavilion uh, is a combination of a series of feed curtains inside which we have blue cubes. And the choice of the color blue is basically related to the tradition of architecture in Iran. In, in Iran. Uh, the the Sionish blue is always present in traditional architecture. So this is the result, the spatial result of utilization of such architectural uh, language. The combination of the beads and reflective scion, uh, scion uh, um, surfaces of the inner cubes. There would, the byproduct of this architectural language is the deliverance of being a space a space, uh, a vague space to be in some surface. Of course, in some of the cubes, uh, we, we don't have the uh, box itself, negotiable boundary of the lead character that defining uh, special. 
So uh, these are the constituting elements of each of the spatial pockets. We have the uh, blue cube. We have the structural system uh, from which the big curtain is hung. And on the roofs, we have vegetation. Another byproduct, or let's say, uh, intended result of such, an, such a design strategy is adding is adding to the sustainability of, build, of the building by limiting the, the square footage uh, of the building that needs to be uh, artificially conditioned. The space of the pavilion is 2,000 square meter. Uh, 969 uh, um, um, square meter of it is actually built and only 538 uh, a square meter of it is artificially conditioned. To cover the rest of the uh, of pavilion in terms of uh, environmental conditioning, we are basically uh, inspired by the tradition of uh, building Persian gardens. A Persian garden is a microclimate which is co climatically conditioned within a, within a harsh macroclimate. The architectural genome of the um, spatial pockets, the cubic spatial pocket, is designed in a way that it is benefiting from the secondary architectural threshold, which contributes to the passive cooling of the sp interior spaces. And also, the roof, uh, the vegetation on the roof uh, is uh, another component of passive cooling. As you know, the pavilion is built in Dubai, which has quite harsh, which has quite harsh climatic condition. So this is the architectural genotype, but it doesn't mean that the same genotype is basically being repeated in this neighborhood of buildings. The neighborhood consists of a taxonomy of possibilities derived from the architectural genotype. Here you see various sectional uh, organization of different spatial uh, pockets. So in the beginning, the initial idea was that the bead curtains would be built out of clay. Unfortunately, because of the situation that we had during the construction phase, and the limitations of the contractor in providing the uh, clay uh, beads, uh, we converted it to wood. Uh, it was limitation in terms of like workforce in Dubai due to Corona and COVID situation. And because of the sanctions, this uh, volume of material could, could not be built in Iran and shipped to Dubai. So uh, right now the beads are being constructed out of uh, wood. They are wooden spheres constructed in Dubai. So the result is not a building, but it is a neighborhood of uh, architectural components. This is the uh, concept, our concept design for lighting, and I'm going to show you how it has been delivered by light. So at the end of the day, uh, returning back uh, to the announced uh, statements of Expo 22, uh, which is creating future connecting minds in a search to understand our own identity as a nation state, we came up with our own custom uh, uh, self-tailored uh, statement. Thinking of a loaded future, which is the Iranian survival strategy, instead of creating future, and celebrating empathy, which is the Iranian technique of resilience, instead of connecting minds. So these are the different these are different renderings of the building as it was designed in the beginning. This is the view of the entrance. This is how you will be approaching the building from the main boulevard. The interior condition experience bonds within the allocated lot for Iran.
pavilion between the uh, basically the queue it is from uh, um, from the, the we are benefiting from the shadow of the queue in terms of party air conditioning this is the stage as it was designed in the beginning and these are the pictures uh, not very high quality the current status of pavilion we are we have to finish in 16 days um, I'm very sorry for the resolution of the pictures I'm just uh, here to supervise the building in fact you can see because I had to be here for fire inspection um, and uh, the iPhone so they are not high quality uh, um, this is the main access within the complex These are the in-between spaces as they have been realized now that the building is up. This is the, uh, the violation of the lights, uh, um, contraption, lighting contraptions on the stage. And this is the pavilion at night as uh, it is actually being delivered by the contractor. In terms of amphitheater, uh, it's a combination of different narratives of contemporary Iran including Persian culture and ecotourism, Persia, Persian cultural and ecotourism, contemporary Iranian art, Persian carpet, a peep show on contemporary Iranian video art, Persian food, Persian teams, live performances on stage, and immersive media with the team of Iranian tech-driven contemporary urban lifestyle, and a commercial box dedicated to give up and memo um, memories of Persia so as the visitors are choosing their own way of navigate, navigating their space they would be delivered by their chosen way of uh, thinking about Iran because there are various ways of navigating their space since their space is designed as a neighborhood your story as a visitor is just one, one tale of the 1001 tale of Shahzad. I need to acknowledge all, my, all of my colleagues. First, first of all, Rambo Dilkani, who is my partner, a founding, another founding partner of our office, Dorna Mesfzade, our junior partner, Ali Mansouri, who is the project manager, and all our colleagues at Chief Process Practice. Hassan Zamani, who is the general commissioner of uh, Iranian Pavilion at the Expo, Jahangir Habibi, Sayyid Hussein Mirza Farjuyan, uh, uh, who have been with us from the client side, uh, trying to make it happen. Uh, Sorenas Attari, the vice president from science and technology, for science and technology, who have uh, agreed to sponsor the content for the uh, immersive media that I've mentioned. Uh, our uh, team in our initial uh, conceptual design, Siamak Farshi, Farhad Fuzuni, Hussein Madani, Iman Maksudlu, Yasser Musapur, uh, and Amir Hussein Tahiri, which you see the na his name, Philodor Namestada, and he was with us, uh, here architect friend of us who, who was with us in conceptual design of the project. Amir Azmaish, electrical consulting, Behruze, Nuri, Mechanical Consulting, and Mohammad Bagher Sohrabi, the Structural Consulting. And, and I have to also thank Ehsan uh, Lajewardi, Amin Rad, uh, Hamid Shakibaniya, and Mahdi Mahabati uh, for uh, their help in terms of uh, provision of content. In terms of provision of content, I have to confess a challenge as well, and I'm going to stop there. Uh, historically, Mesopotamia was a very fertile land. Huh? So in this fertile land, we had the, uh, the, his, the, his, uh, the history of religion in this fertile land uh, states clearly that we had 125,000 prophets. So Iran's pavilion in terms of content is a very peculiar coast, case. Just like Mesopotamia, which was one region with 125,000
ساز و پروفیت شهرزاد از 1 پاویلیون ویز 125,000 کانتنت کیوریتورز بات نان پروویدرز So it has been a challenge uh, to basically come in terms uh, with all people who have a say in terms of content, uh, governmental agencies uh, to agree on a content which is uh, still under negotiation and we are fighting and we are hoping and hey, uncertainty is a part of who we are as Iranians. And on that note, um, I think that I end my presentation.